Hello and welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. My name is Michael Mjisha. Now, on this particular episode, for the next quarter hour, we come back to the Rwanda International Trade Fair after a year, trying to look at how much this particular event that happens annually has happened to help the Rwandan uh, economy see a lot of growth. Now, we don't understand that they added a few more weeks to three weeks and looking at 20 countries that are participating, commodities from all around Africa. How has this made business sense? On this edition of Doing Business in Rwanda, we find out on exactly that. This year's Rwanda International Trade Fair, or Expo, as it's normally known, uh, it was a bit different from the previous expos that we had. Uh, that is in terms of uh, the number of pa participants. Uh, this time we had 500 exhibitors. Uh, last year we had uh, 420. And that means uh, there was some increment in terms of participation. And also in terms of uh, foreign exhibitors, the number increased. Uh, this time we had um, more countries coming in because we are talking about 23 countries that are now participating in this Rwanda's International Trade Fair. Uh, we have new countries like Japan, uh, like Nepal, like Syria, like uh, um, Ivory Coast, Benin, and more. And this is uh, something that we really think, thank that uh, we have gotten more new entrants uh, because of, uh, uh, because of uh, the marketing we did. Uh, we, we did a lot of marketing in terms of attracting the exhibitors and we worked with our foreign missions and embassies to make sure that we get more exhibitors this year. What's different is that people are bringing innovative products to the expo. And of course, uh, the customer care should be upgraded so uh, some of us this time did customer care things that we are not doing as well, you know. We have ushers, we have different people uh, coming in to explain so that we can access uh, many more people. We used to stay in our stands, but now we are moving out of the stands so that we walk around the entire expo. And also, of course, um, the PSF itself uh, brought innovative things like uh, the way people enter, they no longer pay cash. So these are all innovative. Every, every year you have to think of something new that you can bring. This year for us, uh, we decided to bring the, uh, physical demonstrations. Yeah? We decided to bring management information system on site. So you try to think of what more innovative way you can reach out to people. For startups that have been participating in local exhibitions, the International Trade Fair is an opportunity to not only showcase their products, but also learn from their international counterparts. It's my first time to attend the expo. As I told you, our company was founded in November last year. So I was uh, expecting to introduce and market my business. I wanted people to know about my business, about the e-commerce company that is working here in Rwanda. And I was happy that I achieved it. Many people visited my stand. Many people was explained about e-commerce, see how it works, how they can order online and get their products delivered to their place. So I was happy for this expo. I was happy for many people that I got visiting my web, my place and even making some orders on the website. As we know, we don't believe, uh, as Rwandans and Africans, we don't believe in uh, buying something we didn't touch, we didn't see. So that's why I applied for this expo, to show people that something that is on the website is the same thing that we can bring physically. So you, as you are seeing here, we have the sample of some products that are on our website. We wanted people to see that the dress she's seeing here is the same dress that she's seeing on our website. To help them understand that and believe that they can buy something online and get the same thing delivered. We do art in the embroideries and even we use the banana, banana caps. So for now, we are ex exhibiting in a Rwanda International Trade Fair for the first time. 
We are exhibiting it for the first time in, uh, in our career. My experience was to come and uh, show the people that the, my companies exist on the market. So I achieved it. I achieved that, uh, that target. And then also I'm looking forward to have some people to buy. And uh, I have already bought, I have already sell some products. And uh, I, I also still looking forward to sell in this remaining days. I have a market in the Brussels where I send like a 10 pieces and um, in this exhibition I also have uh, like, uh, people who are interested to have a business partnership with my company and uh, I am looking forward to have business partnership with everyone. It's a big impact we have seen as a technology it has been also introduced here in Expo to, to, to to face uh, how people will be uh, tasting their last uh, product, their last uh, filtered water. And uh, the impact was that uh, many people appreciated it. This is our first time to, to attend this international exhibition. Uh, I can say it is very profitable to us because uh, we, have, we, have been, uh, we have been look some uh, challenges uh, we, we can overcome. We have been uh, uh, visited by some other competitors. We can uh, uh, teach. We can teach each other. Uh, we have learned so many things. For us, we have learned to the, those abroad. Those abroad, they bring some uh, innovative things. We have uh, learned. We have learned from what they do, and we have. We are going to make some innovation as Rwandans. We are going to make a, a, a pure uh, made in Rwanda. Now some of the changes that we've seen at the Rwanda International Trade Fairs is the entrance. Now at the entrance, people are accessing the Rwanda International Trade Fair using a tap and go, a system that is electronic and helps you pay for entrance. Now we do understand that the government of Rwanda set a target to reach cashless economy by 2024. Uh, we normally used to have uh, two entrances where people could enter but this time we had the use of tap and go that is the, in terms of uh, promoting ICT uh, people are now using tap and go to access expo venue and as I talk now we have uh, more than 300,000 <coughs> 300, people that have already used tap and, or tap and go cards to enter the expo I think the most convenient part is that uh, before people, you could find when someone doesn't have cash on them, but of course they have transport. So now, because he already has that card of tap and go, which they use in transport, it's always loaded. And I know that Rwandans load uh, a month ahead. So it is easier for them to come and take off one day of transport and come and pay and they access the expo. So that I think was a very good uh, way to ac access more people. The 21st Rwanda International Trade Fair attracted more participants from abroad than any of the previous editions. Out of this, eight new companies registered with Rwanda Development Board to open business in the country. We were invited uh, by our Gambia Chamber of Commerce and um, so I thought it would be very interesting to come to Rwanda. Uh, right now, you guys as a country have a very good reputation are setting an example for Africa um, and I, I did some research online and it was somewhere I wanted to come to. I'm trying to diversify my market a little bit, uh, have new customers and network a little bit and I thought Rwanda would be the right place to come. As you can see I don't even have much left um, so it's been quite good since the expo started. It's been a great experience. Rwandans are beautiful people. Um, I came with my products and they've been buying, buying, buying since I came. I've been able to do a little bit of network and hopefully by the time I leave, you know, I'll be able to have some partners, whereas I can be coming to Rwanda more often in the future. We do have expos in the Gambia. Uh, we have an annual one, uh, which I do normally attend. Um, Comparing it to the expo here, uh, Gambia is a very small country. We're only less than two million in population. So this expo is quite much bigger than the one that we have in Gambia. 
and um, so it's been quite interesting. I think we need to open up our markets a little bit more. Um, we need to take an example from Rwanda, not just on a business level, but just how I see the country in general. Uh, I'm, I'm very impressed how, as a country, uh, we all know the history of Rwanda and how you guys were able to rapidly uh, develop as a country so fast and you guys have definitely been an example for Africa and this is something I definitely want to take home, yes. We are looking for a distributor now and, uh, and uh, to attend this uh, trade fair. Yeah, so many big customers uh, came already. Yes, we have so many connections already. Yes, uh, we uh, start from now with them. We would like to create a company uh, by us, okay, and uh, distribution uh, ag agreement uh, we want, of course, and there are so many chances here. Yes, we are uh, looking for various chances now. We participated uh, uh, the trade fair uh, in Nigeria already. That. Um, Compared with the Japanese trade fair, yeah, African trade fair is very exciting, uh, like a festival. Yes, the in Japan festival, very quiet, <laughs> not festival. Yes, uh, we are exciting now. People are now aware about the Rwanda's international expo. Uh, expo when we are organizing expo, one we we don't target. Uh, to expose the products or services only, but we're also looking at the impact it has on the country's economy. Uh, we talk about uh, increment and the, the impact. Uh, we have now new companies that are opening up in Rwanda, new investment that are opening up in Rwanda as a result of this expo. Uh, so far, ever since it started, that is uh, uh, two weeks ago, I'm talking about on this expo, this edition, we have more than uh, eight companies from different countries that have already opened up, or that have already registered with RDB to open their uh, investment in the country. And that's where we leave it on this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. 500 exhibitors, 20 countries, and three weeks, oh, plus a cashless payment system. Now, if you do have any feedback to this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda, or any other episode of Doing Business in Rwanda, be sure enough to send us an email to dbrr at abn360.com or tweet us at DBI Rwanda. My name is Michael Mjisha, and from the entire Doing Business in Rwanda team, thank you very much for joining us.